Hey guys, good afternoon. This is JMC6000, John Christensen here. And what I wanted to talk about today is piles of wood. No, not really, but uh, on this video today, what I wanted to refer to on one of reference is fuel octane. And what fuel octane you ought to run in your vehicle, specifically the Ford Maverick Hybrid, which I had next to me, but also what fuel octane you should use traveling to certain states so you don't offer 87 as standard. We're gonna talk about that in this video as well. So let's go ahead and begin. Uh, so when we come down to the Ford Maverick, the Ford Maverick offers two different engine options. And it's kind of cool because there's a lot of vehicles kind of applicable to this. But anyway, the Ford Maverick offers two different engine options. One is the standard 2.5 liter Atkinson cycle hybrid engine. And the other is a two liter EcoBoost engine. Uh, one of the unique differences between the two engines is one is turbocharged and direct injected and the other is non-turbocharged non-direct injected and in fact um, is kind of a more of a simpler version of a modern engine today what i want to focus on today is fuel octane for the maverick hybrid specifically and how it applies even to different vehicles so let's begin we'll go away from the power wood it's pretty awesome but so anyway, over here, I have this beautiful Velocity Blue 2022 Ford Maverick Hybrid. You may have seen it in other videos. Pretty awesome truck. Coming up on 20,000 miles, I'm going to have to do a review video on that. We'll tell you everything about that. But before that, what we have underneath the hood of this Velocity Blue Maverick Hybrid is a 2.5 liter Mazda and Ford co-developed this engine way back. Uh, in fact, they came up with this engine right around 2008. It was based off to the 2.3 liter, which is still in production today. And I believe Ford actually stroked, if I remember correctly, they stroked the 2.3 to develop the 2.5 liter. Um, it shares a lot of the same components of the Mazda MZR engine, and it's an Atkinson cycle. So many want to know, what is an Atkinson cycle engine? That's a break doing self-checks here. Anyway, an Atkinson cycle engine, if you don't know, in fact, I would suggest this, please go to engineering, or I'm sorry, engineering explained. Um, he does a great video about what Atkinson cycle engine does and how it operates. It's actually pretty amazing. He explains it very well. I'll give you the short of it. So basically in an uh, auto cycle engine, you have four cycles. You have, and I'll demonstrate it with my fist being a piston, and my other hand kind of being the cylinder wall. So you have intake, where the intake valve opens above, draws in fresh air and fuel. You have compression, where the intake valve closes and compresses the air and fuel. You have ignition, so when the piston comes up against top dead center in the cylinder wall, the spark plug fires, and that explosion presses down, or produces energy and presses the piston down, and then as it comes back up again, kinetic energy comes back up again, the exhaust valve opens, and that would be the exhaust stroke. So, that's the four cycles in there. Now, an Atkinson cycle engine, again, draws air and fuel down in the intake stroke, but on the compression stroke, what the Atkinson cycle does, it actually keeps the intake valve open just a little bit longer, and what that does, it helps to press air and fuel back into the intake runners. Now you may be like, isn't that damaging to an engine? No, because what's amazing is being it's a multi-piston engine, some of these other cylinders that are almost on that stroke or close to that stroke can draw in that extra air fuel and they can use it for themselves. They kind of share in that balance. What's nice about the two and a half liter Ford Maverick hybrid is that it has an intake variable cam timing. So Ford can actually adjust when the Atkinson cycle actually comes on when it comes off, how long that intake valve is gonna stay open. It can't do duration with the intake variable cam timing, but it can do uh, when it comes on and when it comes off, if that makes sense. Um, anyway, so the, the timing, if you will. What I wanted to talk about fuel octane is on this engine in particular, the octane of this engine, or I'm sorry, not the octane, but the compression ratio of this engine is 14 and a half to one or maybe just 14 to one. It's somewhere pretty high. And you may be like, why is it so high? Here's the thing, in Atkinson cylinder activation mode, the compression may be just cut in half. It may be 8.7 to one when the Atkinson cycle's in full engagement. Why? Because when that piston starts coming back up, 
and the intake valve is still open, you're basically cutting in half almost the full compression of what that piston can do. Why? Because some of that air fuel is going out of the intake valve instead of staying within the cylinder and being compressed. Now what's neat about the intake variable cam time, you can actually adjust and actually correlate how, how long that intake valve is open and how much it can actually, it's kind of like a variable compression engine. One of the first to have variable compression, any Atkinson cycle, you know, Nissan just didn't develop it with their weird design and technology. Any engine that has this intake variable cam time, it can be variable compression. Anyway, enough of that. Let's talk about Octane real quick because I don't want to make this video out too long. So when we talk about Octane, the higher the compression ratio, the more Octane you want. In a turbocharged engine, what's unique about turbocharging, like the EcoBoost 2 liter, is that air gets forced into the cylinders. I mean, literally, it is pushed and forced into the cylinders. It's not drawn under its own power. So when you do that, you actually effectively raise the compression ratio of any engine. That's why most boosted engines have a lower compression ratio. I believe the 2 liter EcoBoost is right around 10 to 1 compression. Um, and most boosted engines are either 10 to 1 or even lower than that. Why? Because when you force air into the cylinder, you actually raise the compression ratio. Therefore, you need a higher octane fuel to mitigate spark knock. You may be like, what's spark knock? Um, so let me kind of explain it real briefly. But spark knock is if we take our cylinder and our piston, and as the piston comes up for the activation um, as it compresses the air fuel and for the activation of the next stroke which would be ignition if there is too little octane the fuel can actually fire before it reaches top dead center that's what we call spark knock and it's called pre-detonation that means the fuel detonates before the spark plug actually fires that's not bad i mean that's not a good thing because what happens is as this piston comes up and then all of a sudden you have that fuel fire, that mini explosion, before it hits top dead center, you cause a vibration or, or a knock, if you will, in the engine because it hasn't reached its full potential. We want to mitigate spark knock and that's why we use higher octane fuel. Modern engines today have computers, electronic fuel injection, all those things to mitigate spark knock. Many have a knock sensor, which this engine has right up top here, if you see that sun. This right here is the spark, I'm sorry, the, the knock sensor that actually dictates or kind of figures out when there is spark knock. Anyway, higher octane fuel kind of helps to deter from having spark knock. But here's the thing. In certain states, it has a low, uh, there are lower octanes available. And the reason why is, thank you so much, son. The reason why is, is that in certain states, when carburetors were still in existence, it was actually easier to run a lower octane fuel in higher elevation because of less air density. You didn't need a higher octane fuel to really, because here's the thing, in states that have higher elevation and you're up there in higher elevation with your vehicle, you essentially lower the compression ratio of your engine because the air is not as dense. All that to say this, what should you run in your Maverick, whether it be the two liter, whether it be the two and a half liter hybrid, what octane should you run? And if you're in a, one of those states like Wyoming or Colorado that only offer 85 as the baseline octane, should you run 85 in this? The answer is stick to the book. No, okay, we're done. No, I'm gonna kidding. But I mean, truly, the, Ford says 87 for this engine and 87 for the EcoBoost as well because Ford can actually adjust through the computer spark knock when it comes on ignition timing intake variable cam timing on the two liter they have exhaust valve revive timing as well um and and several different other things that help to mitigate that now it comes down to if you're traveling through wyoming or if you live in wyoming if you live in colorado and you're one of those states that offer 85 as the baseline of octane what should you run it's been said and it's been noted that you should stick with 87 which in those states is the mid-grade i know you're going to pay a little bit more but I'd rather be safe than having any kind of situation happen with the engine. Yes, the engine can adjust itself on the fly automatically, and it could probably run fine with 85. But if you want the most out of your engine, stick with what the book says. Stick with what the engine was designed to run. Here's the thing. Ford designed these two engines to run on 87. If you want to run higher, you can. You may get a little bit of a benefit when you're driving the EcoBoost. You're not going to see much on the hybrid. 
but run the higher one if you want. But 87 is totally fine, and the engine can adjust whether you're up in elevation or down at sea level. All that to say, even in some of those states where they have 85 offered, run 87. Awesome. All right, here we go. That's, that's about it. That's all for this video. I just wanted to kind of share a little bit because there's been some questions around what fuel octane should I run in the hybrid. I know it has high compression. Even though it has high compression, it, it kind of adjusts to a lower compression when Atkins cycle is activated. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I love to read those. I love to learn about those. Again, check out some of those other videos on YouTube. Engineered Explained talks about the Atkinson cycle in more in depth, better than I can. And then also talks about octane of fuel. He has another video that talks about what octane of fuel you should run in your engine, even for modern day engines that are turbocharged, direct injected, and all those. Doesn't really apply to the, to the hybrid or to the Atkinson cycle, but it does apply to the two liter reduced. Thank you again. You guys be blessed. Have a wonderful day and stay tuned for more Maverick content. I'm taking a road trip. In fact, the day this video comes out, I'm going to be on the road that following night and I'm going to document my road trip down to Texas, 1,900 miles one way, staying there for a couple days and then coming back up here to North Idaho, 1,900 miles back. We're going to have it documented. We're going to have it recorded and I'll let you know the fuel mileage, how the truck performs. It's going to come up over 20,000 miles and we'll give a review as well. So more Maverick content to come. Thank you guys for tuning in. Guys, be blessed.